Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here, and it's a fun Friday of stamping. And I have a great project for you today. And one of the things that I sometimes hesitate to hit the easy button because I always feel like I have to come up with this fabulous design that no one's seen before. And of course, that's really rare when I hit upon something completely original and unique. I do come up with um, different designs, but um, today's project is using a bundle where you basically, you just roll the die through and then you get a chance to decorate. And so we are gonna be using the Tricks and Treats bundle. And they come with this really great die. Now, th this is not the only die that comes with it, but this die right here, if you roll through this die twice in um, your die cutting machine, you will come together and you will make some fabulous little uh, treat bags. And what I love about these is that they can be used for other occasions. So get them for Halloween and then you can use them again for Christmas, for Valentine's Day. They are just super cute and you know, you don't have to do any scoring if you don't like scoring. There's different ways to make them. You can make, they have the little die that creates these little holes for if you want to do little handled bags um, and then the e I find it easier not to put handles on them and then just or just to do this um, zigzag top on top and just have that be your little bags and so um, this will hold like several pieces of Halloween candy. I know it's been getting smaller and smaller over the years, um, but I think this would just, you know, if you're handing out candy at a party, an event, or even in your own neighborhood, these are just too great. And I, I often... I often overlook the simple button, but I have to show you this. And so this is my project today. I'm going to show you some things that I did that will help you really use a package of this Them Bones designer series paper really well. Some of you might want to just cut the dies directly out of the paper, but um, I suggest just cutting chunks of this paper in about uh, four by three inches. We're gonna go just a teeny tiny bit under um, the three inch mark, but that will allow you to really utilize this pack of paper and make many, many um, treat bags for whatever event that you want. And so I'm gonna show you how to make um, the handled bag and the the bag without handles and you can just see this this product in action and see if that's something that you might want uh, to get and it's easy to do um i just want to say before i get started i want to say a little shout out to my son nicholas he's doing his work term in vancouver bc uh this fall and he gave me this cute um, little uh, jacket. I don't know if he can, I don't know, does it say Waterloo on it anywhere? Well, this is the, um, I thought it said University of Waterloo somewhere. Maybe it's on here. Huh. Maybe it doesn't say University of Waterloo, but that's his um, school. My husband and I also went to the University of Waterloo and um, he gave me this because he knew that uh, I went there and he's going there. So it's near and dear to my heart. So I wanted to give him a shout out and thank him again for this half zip that he sent me. I think it was for my uh, birthday um, last year. So that was really sweet of him. All right, I am one other thing. Before I get started, I need to share my host code with you. So if you spend $50 using this host code during the month of September, you will be getting these Fawcetted Gems Trio. Um, and there's more than that, this many in, in a package. Um, and it's 
it's really large up on the screen, but I just wanted to share with you like the, the details um, of them. And um, that will be the gift for the month. Now, if for some reason we've had our embellishments have been coming in and out of stock from the holiday catalog, uh, if for some reason these are not available, I will pick something of equal or less, not equal, equal or greater value, not lesser value, equal or greater value, because I wouldn't want to make it lesser value, but you will absolutely be getting a gift from me if you use this host code and spend $50 with me in um, September. So um, I just wanted to point that out. So if you're interested in getting the bundle, um, I would suggest we are also gonna be using um, uh, glow in the dark paper. And where is grab it real quick so this glow the dark paper is so awesome but it's not in stock right now and neither are these uh, glow in the dark ghosts and bats i have noted when they'll be back in stock over on my um, blog and um, what i suggest doing is getting the halloween bundle and the paper right now um, before they go out of stock um, cuz I when Halloween stuff goes out of stock it tends not to come back into stock if it's too late like if it goes out of stock in October they will not have enough time to bring it back in stock before Halloween and so they might not bring it back in stock at all so I suggest getting the bundle and the paper now um, the paper if the paper goes out of stock, it should be back in stock in, 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 in a week, the Them Bones Designer Series paper, because it's not a specialty paper, it's a regular paper, and we produce that in the US. Um, but the Glow in the Dark paper and these cute little embellishments, these are produced overseas, so they take longer to come back in stock. These guys will be back in stock, I think, September 25th, and the paper will be back in stock on October 2nd. So get these when they come back in stock, but these are things that you can add maybe afterwards. You can cut all your bags now, get everything ready for what you wanna do, and then these can be the elements that you add afterwards so that you're not stuck at the last moment trying to get everything ready. If you wanna plan ahead, get them right now i love this treat bag die um it's it's not called that it's it's in the tricks and treats bundle or you can buy it separately these are called the tricks and treats dies okay so um it's got the cute little ghost right here oh going in the wrong direction the cute little ghost and the cute little boo so I did this ghost right here in glow in the dark paper. So if this is um, in a dark room, it's going to, and I can't create a dark room here right now because it's too bright in this room uh, with all the windows. So it's not gonna work, but this will glow in the dark. Um, got the boo in a glow in the dark. I've got this moon is a glow in the dark. And then I've got some bats up top here that are will glow in the dark. So it's kind of fun. And you can add some of these elements onto your project and it will be really fun. Um, I have not tried uh, stamping on this paper. It's got, um, it, it almost feels like, um, you know, when you have glimmer paper, it's got kind of like a, um, a rough texture to it. So I don't think it's gonna be good for stamping on. So if it, you're looking for something to stamp on, that is not, uh, the best use of this. This is great for die cutting like moons and this the ghost shape that works really well. So it's better as a die cut element I think than something you would stamp on. All right, I think I've told you everything we need to know before we get started. Hello everyone, so good to see you. I will talk to you at the end. And I'm gonna just, we're gonna jump in and get started because we wanna make a couple of these treat bags. All right, I've got my bags kind of all situated out and you probably saw um, my uh, title. So um, the designs don't come as any surprise, but there's just so many ways to make up these bags. And 
Um, that's what, what I love about them. You could stick, if you wanted to, you could stick tissue paper in them and like put candy in a little piece of tissue paper at the top. Not necessary, but if the tissue paper, if you're, you're, if you're using these, that might um, help the candy stick inside the bag. So if it's like being um, moved around, it will actually stay in. So that might be something you could consider. Tissue paper is so readily available, so you can get that somewhere. Um, okay, so let's start off. I need to grab my trimmer. So let's grab my trimmer. I'm gonna show you how I cut my paper down when I'm making the bags. So we're gonna be making a bag that's similar to this one with the handles. And to create the little bag pieces, you're gonna need two of those die cuts. So to cut this down, the best way I have found is to take this, um, put it at the four and three quarter inch mark. So this is just a piece of eight and a half by 11 and I have the eight and a half inch side up at the top. And I'm gonna cut this, this is at the four and three quarter inch mark. This smaller piece um, I, I will reserve and use for other things, for different elements um, that I need. Um, and then I'm gonna take this piece and um, put it at the five and a half inch mark. So now I have two pieces that are five and a half by four and three quarters, and that's the perfect size for running these through. So you basically can only get one bag out of uh, one sheet of cardstock, and you're going to have some leftover cardstock. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're buying your supplies. We'll bring in our die cutting machine. You're going to need the, a bigger machine, not a mini machine, because you need the width for the bag pieces. So over here. Um, and we're gonna need this big die right here. We're going to, I, I like to put this on an angle because when you're running through, and if you have a straightaway like this, the roller hits it really hard almost, and you kind of have a kerthump. So you kind of want to angle it so it comes through on an angle. Um, if you've never die cut before, uh, a die cutting machine like this will come with all the plates you need. I've got my base platform, my thin die adapter on there, and one clear plate on the bottom. And then I'm going to take my other plate, a clear plate on the top and the bottom, and then we're going to run this through. Um, before I do that, I just saw that that shifted, so I'm just going to want to make sure that my die is covering the entire piece of paper. I like to go all the way through and then back again. It helps with those score lines because you will see that... This has some score lines already built right into it, and that just helps them a little bit. Depending on your die cut machine, you may or may not want to do this. Sometimes that, uh, if your machine has a lot of pressure, um, running it through twice might not be a good idea. So you have to experiment with your die cut machine because they're just all a teeny tiny bit different. On mine, I like to go back and forth once. All right. Okay, so this bag is going to be a handled bag. So what we're gonna do, let's see if this works. I'm gonna line both of these guys up on top of each other and put this back on here. And we've got these two holes right here. There's a small hole and a, a bigger hole. I'm gonna take the smaller holes because I, I don't want to have to make too big of a knot with my ribbon. And I'm just gonna lay this down on here. I'm gonna see if I can do two at a time because I can do the zigzag 
at the same time. And I know the first time I did that bag, okay, you might want to take a little bit of this post-it labeling and cover-up tape. Take a little bit of that and just stick this on here so it doesn't shift. Let's see if we can do both of these. I will definitely be going back and forth with this. Okay, I can feel that it's gone over both of them. Let's see if I cut all the way through. Oh, yeah. Went all the way through the bottom one. So it definitely went all the way through the top one. So just peel this off. And there we go. Got the little handles. We'll set this aside because we're going to knead it again. So when you're making these, you're going to want to make them assembly line so that, you know, you're not having to do um, as much work back and forth. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Shoot. You know what I forgot to do? See with these, this handles, I forgot to glue the paper on first. You need to glue the paper on first. So let's, let's grab our paper and I'm going to have to run this through one more time. I'm going to have a project sheet for this just so you, not that this is hard, just so you know in which direction to, or which order to do everything. So you don't forget something like me. I'm trying to find my piece of paper that has, let's see, okay. okay. Let's see what's on the back of here. This is the boo one. Okay. I just want to show you, you're going to get two pieces of paper in the Them Bones pack that look like this. And you can cut all of these apart along the lines, go here and here first. And then you're gonna go in the opposite direction once you get those two original lines. So I have this piece right here. And I'm gonna, I wanna use this little kitty cat because it's really cute. So a lot of these pieces can also be used on your, your bags. So don't discount this piece just because it doesn't have an overall pattern. So I'm gonna grab my trimmer one more time. And you just line them up on your trimmer and cut. So we're gonna need, this one is, I, I'm gonna cut this down, the width of this right now is three inches. I'm gonna cut it down just 1 16th of an inch shorter. Uh, so it's um, just 1 16th shorter, so that would be two and 15 sixteenths. And then we're going to make this four inches tall. So we need to decide if I put this on four inches right now, I think that's gonna be a little bit, it's gonna be a little bit close to the the cat's head. So I'm just looking at the four inch mark. So maybe I'm gonna take a little bit off of the bottom and a little bit off the top. I think that will be a good distance right there. So I'm gonna cut like that and then come over here and cut like this. So this is going to be four, about four by three inches. And so what I forgot to do, you want to put this on here first and then do your, um, your holes. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this on here and we're going to die cut this one more time with that little piece with the holes. Okay. I love this. Creep it real. So, so cute. Okay, let's bring this in one more time and let's fix my mistake. We're going to take this right here. I'm going to feel where the holes are, right? And I think I, I'm going to want to pin it down because I feel like it's going to shift on me. Oops. Grab just a teeny tiny piece. I'm feeling where it is with my fingers. You know what? Okay. 
I just wanted to make sure both of those um, pieces of paper had come out of those holes. Okay. And now we're going to run this through. One more time. Or the other thing is if you had a 1 8 inch hole punch, you could go ahead and just fix your mistake like that. But now we've got those holes right in there. So now you know how to fix that if you make that mistake. Um, and I don't know if I'm going through three layers of paper with these um, would work or um, we'd, we'd have to trial that out, but I think it would. Um, if you use just our regular designer paper. Okay, so now what we wanna do, let's um, fold this along the score lines. And I like to kind of do this first, just with my fingers. Okay. You know what? I might suggest, like I feel like maybe running this through twice maybe i only needed to do it once but these these folded really easily when remember when i went back and forth so you can decide whether you need to go back and forth or not um because that was quite crisp coming through okay so i just put glue on this tab right here and now I'm going to line this up on here. Push that down. And then I'm gonna flip this over. And I'm gonna fold this over so you can see where kind of this little tab sticking out. And I'm gonna put glue on this tab and then fold this over like this. This is gonna make sure your box is nice and aligned. And it's easier to press down when it's flat like this than when it's in the air. And then I can flip this over and press those tabs down one more time. Okay, flip it to the bottom. This part right here, you might wanna pay attention to because it's a little loosey-goosey. So if you wanna make sure your box is square, just pay attention at this part. I'm gonna put a little dot of glue here and here. And since this is my front, I want that one folded down last. So I'm gonna fold this one first, okay? And then this one, See, there's a bit of a gap here, so I'm just gonna put glue here and here, not close to the center. So kind of do that. And then we're gonna fold this over the top. And you just wanna make sure that this looks aligned, like it looks straight, because if you shift it too much, then it's it's going to, one of my boxes, I didn't realize this at first, one of my boxes sits a little wonky because you can see I have a little bit more of the tab on this side and a little less on this side. So if you pay a little attention while you're assembling this, it's, it's gonna help your box sit nicely. You can take a bone folder and kind of tamp down on there and make sure that everything is adhering nicely. Okay, so now we just need to um, do something with these holes. So I'm gonna take some ribbon, and this is the black and white gingham. This is not the gingham that is in the holiday catalog. This is the one that's in the annual catalog. I made note of it in the supply list. So um, the one in the catalog is a little wider. The holiday catalog is a little wider and it's actually um, basic black and vanilla. This one is a little thinner and it's um, black and white gingham, okay? So I'm gonna grab like eight inches, two eight inch 
pieces. And this one, I would say making the handles is a little slower than doing the zigzag ones. So you will tie a knot in both of these, just on one end. And I'll try and get the knot um, fairly close to the end. And I'm, I'm not tying it, like I'm not tying it super tight. If you do a super tight knot, you might have to do two because you're gonna need enough width in here to make sure that the knot doesn't pull through. So then I'm just gonna scrunch the one end and I'm gonna pull it through. And we'll do the same thing for the other side too. Oops. Okay. And then we'll put it through the front. Okay. Reason you want eight inches is you need enough length to pull it all the way through and still have enough room to do another knot. So you could uh, maybe, I'd probably say seven inches is probably about the smallest you would wanna do. You can experiment, but when you pull this through, you need enough length to make sure you can still make a knot. You know, and you want a little bit of, of handle right there. And then we're gonna do the same for the other side. So, you know, this just takes a little bit of, of time if you're doing this compared to just doing a plain zigzag top. It just really depends on the look that you want and how much time you like to spend. Okay. And then we'll pull this through again. So one thing I did with my um, other bag, I just wanna show you See how, hmm, this is, lighting's not 100% great. Trying to see, I can show you. Anyway, um, let me kind of do this a little bit. My little ends are pinned down with a mini glue dot. So you can take a mini glue dot. I'll just show you on one. You can take a mini glue dot, grab it, put it on the end of something and then pull out your little knot, right? And you, you can stick it on the end, okay? Pull this back through, and now you can flatten this against this inside side of here. And that just helps it like not stick out like that, um, kind of way out like that, and it helps also keep your handles sticking up for presentation purposes. So if you want to do that, that will just help um, everything look a little nicer, right? So that's what I did with this one right here. Just put little mini glue dots right on those ends just to um, create that look. So this bag, um, since I'm already using a lot of paper, like the paper is actually perfect for this. It's got already a, a perfect design. For this one, what I would probably do is just grab some of these cute little um, ghosts or bats. Let's grab a little ghost. And we could put a little ghost going up here. And we could put some bats in the sky too. I always like to put like two bats. But anyway, you can have fun and play around with these little elements. And that's one way to, you know, keep this one really simple. We've got this sheet, this one that I showed you with all of these designs on it that you can cut apart. And then you've also got this sheet right here, okay? So with this one, I just cut this in half. And then that's the one I use to make this one right here. See, this one is this rickety bones right here. So you can use this paper as well to create scenes 
for your little, little bags. Okay, let's do a bag that has a zigzag top just for a little difference. And so for that, I've already cut myself two pieces of basic black cardstock and I ran them through um, with that die. And I wanna create a zigzag top for that. So let's grab the die cutting machine one more time. We've got this plate. Okay, same sandwich as before. We've got these two, they're stacked. They're, they're both stacked. We're gonna grab this die right here with the zigzag. And I like to start my zigzag right where the score line for this tab meets. I, I don't think you can really do it wrong. I, I will line mine right up with the very top edge. And I'm gonna pin it down because since this is in like a straight line, it's 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 gonna wanna shift by the time I stick this down or it's gonna twist a little bit. So it's just, that edge is right, right along the top right there. I'll stick this on and we're gonna run this through. I'm gonna go through back and forth because I, uh, I'm going through two sheets of cardstock. So let's take this off and see how this did. I'm taking this post-it note tape off carefully because I don't want it to rip. <clears throat> okay, it went through both pieces, so great. We're gonna come in here. So this zigzag right here kind of ends right here. So you're gonna wanna cut this tab on the edge right here. We're just gonna angle cut it a little bit so it ends on this edge right here. So we're just kind of cutting off a little bit more of, of the piece because now your top of your bag is, is a little lower, okay? Oh, I've got sunshine coming in on my space. Let me move that out of the way. Just give me one second or two seconds. All right, I think. Uh, I think that's good. I've got, well, maybe I need to go down a little lower. My one side is up. To, oh, you know what? My a light is, is pinning it. All of these things you need to Okay, I think I got it now. I I don't I love sunshine, but I don't love it when it comes in on my work surface because then you find it hard to see. Okay, so I've got my two pieces right here. My post-it neat tape has left a little bit of residue on here. So let me just show you real quick. If you do this with a post-it note or whatever, you get residue. Take a clean white eraser, make sure there's no marks on it, and then just do this. And this will take um, that residue off so now it's no longer sticky. Okay. So we've got those two pieces ready to go. Now we just need to decorate them. So we're gonna do some die cutting. Got, got some die cuts already. Need to do a little stamping. And I'm gonna take this um, haunted house and I'm going to take my starry sky ink pad Ink this up, and this is just regular basic white, not the thick one. Regular basic white has a really nice smooth surface to it, so you're going to get a better stamped image than if you use thick basic white. Our ink pads are firm foam ink pads. They are just wonderful for creating a nice smooth image. Um, I did when I first got this, 
Um, I did clean it off because the first time I stamped, whenever these photopolymer stamps come right out, they, um, they might have a bit of residue left on them. So I just used my, my chamois, okay? And I just like cleaned this off. This is on a hard surface and I just like cleaned it off. And then uh, I, I used my, my ink pad and you get this just beautiful, um, nice um, image. If for any reason, if you're stamping with a, a new ink pad for the first time, if your image is really, you can't see the detail like I can right here, because this is a really nicely stamped image. If yours looks like um, there's just ink all over the place, a couple of things that you might can, could do to help that is take a paper towel and get rid of some of the ink. If you're losing the detail, your pad is too inky. The other thing, um, you might have smushed your stamp too far into the ink pad. You just want to hit the top surface and go tap, tap, tap. You don't want to smush it too much into the ink pad. Otherwise, you're going to get ink into all of those grooves and then they're going to transfer down into there. So that, that can be the other mistake. Too inky, too much pressure. Um, and then when you stamp down here, um, you want to be firm. But again, you don't want to like really like shove this down into um, to next year. You want to like push down firmly, hold for a few seconds and then lift off firmly but like not like you're trying to you know kill the stamp or something like that so if you do those three things um that can help if you have an impression that um where there's a lot of um where it's not stamping really well and you're using our firm foam ink pads then your ink pad might be too dry that could be one thing um some people like to use a um a firm foam pad under uh, like a, a foam mat underneath and that can help with impressions too. So let me know if you have problems with your stamping and I can try and troubleshoot and help you um, get a nice clear image like this. Does help to have some paper to practice on too. That, that also helps because you need to get a little bit used to stamping if you're new to things. Okay. So we need to do some die cutting. I've already cut a glow in the dark circle and one die set that I forgot to mention at the beginning, I'm also using the stylish shapes dies. Um, I use the banner die Let me see where, for this one right here to back up the boo. Okay. And um, I use the circle dies, you know, for, this one trick or treat or to create the moon. So um, it's a good set of dies to have. You definitely will want some circles and banners in your collection. Okay, let's do the last bit of die cutting that we need for this project. Set this aside. Okay. Okay, this one's already die cut. I don't need to die cut it again. We'll stick the boo on here. We'll grab this one. We'll grab a little piece of the post-it tape to make sure this is on here. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll stick that down. That's all we need. All right. This boo is just so cute. I love it when we do that boo in glow in the dark paper, because that can be really fun. But we did the moon instead. Okay, so we've got all our pieces. And let's, let's glue this together first. So, um, We'll need to fold this along the score lines again. OK. 
Okay. And this end tab, put glue on it. Glue, glue. Trying to line this bottom up and this line up right here. Press down, flip this over, bend right here. This is the top right here. And then bend this one over. It's so nice to do it flat. You know what? If we want to, we could also create our design right now, right here when everything's flat, then we can press everything down. So you'll want to lay your pattern out and see where everything goes. So I think maybe on, on this original one, I did the boo kind of coming off the side and that looks really, it does look good. But then afterwards I thought, since this is a glow in the dark moon, if we put boo all the way on the glow in the dark, then we're gonna have the boo is gonna be illuminated all the way around. So I thought maybe it would look better like that. So I'm gonna just shift a little bit. So I think I like, let's see how that looks. So I'm gonna take this one right here, just put a little glue on that edge, because I wanna kind of get this situated on here. We'll glue this on here too. all the way on there okay so now that I've got these pieces kind of glued together now I'm gonna flip it over and put glue on the whole thing because now I can maneuver this as a whole entire piece and I want a little room for my bow and I want some room for my bats so and you know what? I might switch my bow. I'm trying to decide where I'm going to put the bow and where I'm going to put the bats. Or if I'm even going to put the bow on this time. Let me grab my little bats. They have disappeared under my pile of debris. Here we go. You know what? I think I want the bow over on this side. It just must go over on this side and then the bats will go up that way. Okay, let's grab a couple of these bats. I love that. And then we're gonna grab this bow and I'm gonna put Terran tape on the back. The bow. On the loops. I like using tear and tape because it's got a little bit more surface area or I can make it bigger surface area than mini glue dots. I've mentioned this many times before. Okay, we'll put that on there. All right, so now I just need to glue the bottom of this box. Do the same thing as before. Start off with a little bit of glue right there and there. Bring this one in and then this one we're just going to put glue on the outer edge and bring this together. I just want to take a quick peek to make sure my box looks square before I flip it around and put it down and then use my bone folder to kind of push down on the bottom, make sure it's adhering well. And there is my cute little box. Very, very easy to make. And if you do this in assembly line style, it's gonna be even easier. You'll get all your pieces together and grab a friend and have them come over and help you 
with your assembly. I think we've got duplicates, so let's move out all of these different boxes. Oh, and one more. So there you go. So many different ways to make these little boxes. And can you imagine these in Christmas paper or Valentine's paper? You can really have a lot of fun with this little die to create these little cute little um, little handled bags or with these zigzags on top. It could be like a lot of fun to make up all of these treat bags. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. And um, I will have a project sheet um, mainly so you can see the order to do stuff. And um, I'll have pictures of all the bags that I made. And I know you're going to make many, many more bags. And you'll probably do an even more fantastic job decorating them up than I did. That's what I always find is that you guys have so many great ideas on how to really take these bags to the next level but I wanted to show you you know designs that were really doable like this is like a really doable design for your your bags um, some of these they involve paper if I had done this one um, with the zigzag top it would have taken even less time so you can just decide you know how how you're going to um, decorate them up. I, I kept my design cute but simple because you're going to want to make a lot of these and um, you know some of you aren't going to want to spend um, 10 minutes on each single one. So I hope that was useful for all of you. Don't forget I have a host co going for the month and this is my gift for September. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can um, share more uh, projects um, with you in the future. And let me get rid of this for now. And let's talk to all of you. Are you loving the holiday catalog? It is really great this year. There's just so many things in it that I, I want to make. Um, but I, 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 I kind of wanted to jump ahead and do um, some other things. But we need to really do Halloween right now because Halloween has such a short window with this catalog because we're already we've already burnt through the first two weeks of September. So now is really the best time to get your Halloween pro products so that by the time you get your um, um, products at the end of September, beginning of October, you can start making them and you don't feel rushed. So right now is the best time to get them. And also things will um, probably start selling out with the Halloween stuff and usually we don't see them come back in again with the Halloween stuff. So I want to say hello to everyone. Hello, Linda. And she says um, she loves, um, she says she loves my projects. Thank you so much. And she says, oh, it's she, she's been suffering in a um, hundred degree weather, over a hundred degree weather, and it's finally below a hundred degrees today. Well, that's awesome. It cooled off here significantly today too. This morning it was, I want to say, I, um, I looked at my temperature in Celsius. Uh, so it was 12 Celsius. So it would have been somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees this morning, which was really, it was really nice for um, the walk this morning. Hello, Mary from Kansas City. Hello, Sue from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Hello, Kay from Maine. Hello, Deborah from Virginia Beach. Nice to have you here. Hello, Lorraine from Iowa. And hello, Pat. Um, hi, Marty from Pittsburgh. And she says those bags are so cute. Deborah says she's from Western Pennsylvania. Welcome. Uh, hello, Veronica. Um, hello, Sally from Manchester, Pennsylvania. Kay says she has some of the glow in the dark paper, and it really does glow great. It does. It does. So I actually took, I um, wish I could take you with me because I've got um, this 
computer is like hardwired into my modem so it's not very transportable right now but um i took i i tested it out i took it um at in, into my basement or just inside my basement door and shut the door where it's super dark and it it really does glow nicely so um, whatever you make out of it it's it's just great to add that kind of fun element um, I can see these you know these would be great at um, you know, Halloween party where the light's a little lower on um, the actual Halloween when it's dark out and you can have these um, sitting out with the glow in the dark. I, people just love glow in the dark elements. Kids especially, I think it intrigues adults too. You know, I, I love fun stuff. Why save it all for kids, right? Kids are important and we love them, but hey, we adults can have fun too, right? Um, hello, Jen. Um, hello, Mary from Indiana. And she already has the dies and stamps. Good. Well, you're all set to make Halloween projects and maybe some other projects too. Um, uh, Nancy says hello from New York and she says she hopes my mom is doing well. Yeah, my mom is, is doing okay. She's hanging in there. She's, um, hello mom, if you're watching, um, you know, she definitely has her ups and downs. I uh, haven't decided when I'm going out to visit her next. Um, but, um, yeah, she's hanging in there, which is very, it's amazing since I thought I was going to lose her earlier this year. So we've had like a little bit more time with her and, and I appreciate every little bit. I talk to her every night. Um, so I always, uh, always end up my evening by talking to her. So, uh, I love every, every second that I get with her. Um, thanks. Thank you so much for asking. Mary says she bought Welsh fruit snacks for her great grandson's treat for his class. I love that. Yeah. Cause, um, the fruit snacks, um, uh, I, I actually really love those Welsh's things too. Um, so that's a nice alternative to your like typical candy. So, you know, look around, um, you can probably find things if you're want to give a healthier Halloween snack, you can probably find things. I know in the past I've also, now this is probably not good for classrooms, but I, I like to go to nuts.com, but I know they have a lot of nut restrictions for classrooms. Um, if you're up in Canada, there are some companies like the um, company that makes Smarties and Coffee Crisp. They have like a nut, a nut with a, a, a no sign over top of it. So like they have like, um, treats that are made in in factories where they don't have nuts so um those are also really good for for um classrooms and stuff um but yeah like and with halloween candy you have to be really careful if you're if you're allergic to nuts because you know you're going out and different people are handing you out stuff and there's a lot of nuts in candy in general so that that can be a tough one um, hello, MJ from New Mexico. Pat says, did you say what catalog of the bag making dies are in? And can you give the host code? Oh, yeah, sorry. And I, you probably have seen the host code. There it is. This is my gift of the month. Um, it's, oops, I just hit my die cutting machine. The bundle is called Tricks and Treats. Um, and it comes with a stamp set and my dies, which have been scattered. Some of them are missing because I, but, um, they come with, um, these, I'm mirrored. So this is always hard. They come with those dies and, um, a couple more, which are si still sitting on my die cutting machine. Um, so it is a very overtly Halloween bundle, but, you don't have to use it for Halloween. I mean, you probably, if you're getting this bundle, you're probably wanting to make Halloween stuff, but don't just use it for Halloween. You can use it for other holidays too. You can use it for Christmas, for Valentine's Day, or whatever, birthdays, whatever you want to use it for. It, it's, you know, it, it has more legs than just this particular holiday. So if you want to get it for Halloween, it, I mean, it really is a great Halloween set. And I, I, I love it because, you know, 
I'm, I don't like horror movies. <laughs> I'll admit it. I, I, I don't, I don't like that thing. I like happy Halloween, like happy Halloween. Like this ghost is smiling, right? Um, the, the, you know, the, the skeletons here are dancing. The boo is in bold script. So, and even these two guys that come with this bundle, um, I use these, um, if you want to see how to stamp these ones, I um, did that in um, Tuesday's video. I made a card with them, so I didn't redo that. But these are, they're all happy, right? So it's a very happy Halloween project. So I, I love that. Um, it's not scary for, you know, little kids if they're coming to your door. It's it's not, it's, they're all smiling. I mean, Halloween could be scary for anyone, right? Um, but it's, it's not, not overtly scary, right? If you're going out and trick-or-treating on Halloween, you're probably going to come across some things that are much more scary than that. So this is a nice, gentle Halloween. Hello, Terry. So nice to see you. Um... Um, and Mary, Mary's been, I'm, I'm doing these all in order. So Mary, thank you for um, giving Pat um, uh, the, what the bundle was in the paper. Thank you for that. Um, hello, Wanda. And she says, cute bag. Pat said, can you turn, run the bag die using the little boss or do you have to have the big boss? You definitely need the big boss. There, it's not enough width to go through the mini boss machine. So you'll definitely need a bigger die cutting machine. So my scrap piece of paper that I ran through for just the one die, um, it was four and three quarters by five and a half. So um, the width on the mini boss is around, I think three inches is the, the biggest width you can do with that. So you definitely need the larger one. Um, hello, Pamela from Connecticut. Um, good morning, Cindy. Oh, she's um, enjoying her coffee on the front porch in the sunshine, I think it was. Yes, a little sunshine. Awesome. That's, that's amazing. Um, we were out there walking this morning, although it was overcast this morning when we walked, but we get out in the fresh air every single day. It's such an important part of my day. I, I love, I'm an avid walker. I know I've probably mentioned this many, many times, but I walk every single day. It's, it's my like little sanity. I, I need to get my, my body moving and it just helps with, with everything in my world, um, for my mental health, my physical health. So highly encourage everyone to get out and get a walk. Even if it's just a short one, it's so good for everything in your life. Um, Cindy said she um, did these treat bags last week at club. So cute. I absolutely, I think everyone who, um, you know, is doing Halloween right now, this is definitely a great bundle for that. Hello, Mary from Minnesota. She says she loves 3D projects and I do too. Um, Mary says, remember to give Brenda a thumbs up. Thank you, Mary. You're awesome. Um... Kay says, thanks for the great share. Cindy says, thanks again. Deborah says, thanks. Laura said, I didn't catch you from the beginning, so I'll have to watch the replay. Well, I hope you do, Laura. I'm glad you're here this morning. Um, Kay said, everything is so tempting in that new book, the catalog she's talking about. Yeah, it's a really great catalog this time around. Um, there is so much in it um, for all the holidays. And it's, um, it's, yeah, and I've just scratched the surface. We've just, um, I've just started last week with Halloween. I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week. I have to have a look at what products I have on hand and see what I want to do next. Um, I think I might be switching into another holiday next week. Well, we'll see. We'll see what I'll, I'll, I'll do. Um, it's, uh, I, I like to kind of keep an eye on what's selling in the catalog. I don't want to disappoint anyone by creating a project that you can't make. 
Um, most of what we what I use today is available right now with the exception of the glow in the dark paper and the, um, the bats and ghosts, the glow in the dark bats and ghosts, but those should be available, um, uh, the bats and ghosts on the 25th and the, um, the glow in the dark paper, I think it's October 2nd or October 3rd. So check back then if you want those then. I suggest getting the bundle sooner rather than later because I don't know how much supply they brought in. So I, I don't want anyone to be disappointed. Um, Kay said, great day here today, but tomorrow we're getting that hurricane. I know, right? I'm, we are, so we're, of course, we're, we're inland, um, but we're not super far from the ocean. We're probably about like a 40 minute drive from the ocean. So um, they, we are in an alert area. So yeah, we're going to get some winds, possibly some rain. So we'll, we'll see what we end up getting. I hope it's not too bad. I hope everyone's safe. Um, yeah. Hope, hope you stay safe, Kay. Um, she says she'll be doing cards tomorrow. Well, yeah, that's a good use. I'm going to run out and do some errands today. So, um, that tomorrow I don't have to leave the house if I don't have to. Um, Kay says the ocean is just at the end of your road. Oh my goodness. Uh, but not the first time and won't be the last as Mainers are tough. Oh, I, well, good luck. Yeah. Maine, Maine is quite the state. It's, it's got so much natural beauty though. I'm sure it's beautiful to live there. Um, Pat says she'll be praying for my mom. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And Kay says she loves the characters in this bundle. I do too. They're just happy, happy Halloween characters. And Martha says, thank you for the cute projects. Um, and Pat says she agrees with me. No scary Halloween. Yeah, I, you know, I want to keep it light and fun. And I think of the, you know, when my son was little, you know, we want to keep them happy, not, not scared, like, like excited, scared, but not scared. Like, oh my gosh, there's a monster under my bed scared, right? We want to keep it light and happy and, and fun because when it isn't, then that's no longer fun for kids, right? Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Let me know if you have any questions and um, if you have um, need help help ordering um i um if you message me um i i will call you and help you place your order um so um never never um think that um just because you can't use um you're not good with computers i definitely have customers who call me and place orders so um don't let that keep you from getting some great products i hope you have a great weekend stay safe out there take care everyone bye bye